Hi, this is Jared from Shunome, and today I want to walk through the process of importing an object into ARCHICAD and then cleaning it up so the 2D and 3D looks better. On the screen right now is the simple process. You could just hit like on the video, pause, and just follow the instructions there, but we're going to walk through and it will hopefully make more sense and cover a bunch of the nuance and details. Okay, so ARCHICAD can import objects from all sorts of different programs, Revit, Files, SketchUp Files, FBX, all this stuff. And so if we go up to File and External Content, no nope, interoperability, nope. Libraries and Objects, of course. If we go to Libraries and Objects, you can see we can import DWGs, we can import RFAs, Rhino files, FBXs. You can also, or some file types specifically, SketchUp SKP files, just drag and drop, and it'll just drop in there. And when you do that, it's going to think for a second and the object will come in there. If we go up here to file libraries and objects or library manager, we can see that it will come in in the embedded library. I just brought in Chevy Suburban Zero. We actually have two in here set so Chevy plus Suburban is the original one. So you can see I brought it back in and it keeps on bringing in extra versions of that. So let's go ahead and delete that. So file comes in and you can see it's all Faceted. If we quickly jump ahead, here is the SketchUp file as it's imported into ARCHICAD, and here's where we're going to end up over here. Huge difference, much, much nicer. So how do we do that? Well, first we place the object, either file import or, you know, file libraries and objects, import or drag and drop. The next thing we want to do is place hotspots at the corner of the object. So you can see when the cursor changes the check mark, we can go ahead and put those hotspots there. The reason is, if we look at this object, you can see that it has uh, hotspots here, here, and here. That's the extents of the object. It's its farthest up here, it's farthest here, where in this case the side view mirrors are here, and so the object itself is a box. That's going to matter when we get to cleaning up the 2D symbol and making sure that it looks good. So first thing we're going to do place the object, then we add the hotspots at the corners. Next thing we do is we'll take the object, sometimes tricky to select, select that object, I'll just copy it down here for a second, and we'll go up to convert to morph. Under design, down convert selection to morphs, I also have a button in my work environment over here. We do that, we will hit OK. Once that happens, it's no longer an object, it's now a morph, and here you can see if we go in here now and look at that, already, I didn't select the wheel there, but already it's, it's cleaned up and looking a lot better. So now we have that, and it's better, but not all the way there. Let's actually go back and look at this again, and we'll see. Next thing I want to talk about here is you could see some, some stuff going on here with the surfaces. What's happening there? I'm actually going to go to another file, and we're going to import the object again. But before we do that, let's look at the attribute palette, which I have open, and look at the surfaces. You can see all the surfaces are straight out of the template and in folders as they should be. So let's now go and bring in the SketchUp file again, replace it. Okay, guys, thanks for a second. Okay, nothing weird. Now we're going to select the file or select the object. We're going to turn it into a morph. Hit OK. Now let's look over at the attributes pile again. And here is all this extra surfaces. These are all surfaces that came with the object, right? So they were embedded into the SketchUp file and they exploded and now it created a bunch of garbage in our file. You can actually look real quick and see, okay, it didn't bring in any lines. That's good. It's just all these surfaces. Okay. So we got that. Let's go back to the other file now. So what we can do, actually let's stay in that file because this will be easier. Now that we've converted into a morph, We've got two things to do. We're going to explode into line work and create the 2D file or the 2D of the object. And then we're also going to clean up the object. So let's clean up the object in the other file and show you what we're doing there. So let's jump to 3D now and clean up the surfaces. So the most obvious one here is if we look at the grill, we can see that's a weird surface. And so if we change the cursor to the, the white arrow instead of the, the black arrow, we can select inv individual facets of the model and we could, or of the morph. And we could go and see, okay, so that's fencing diamond mesh to 65. And we could go and manually change this to something else. Let's just say brick, right? Uh, oh, sorry. Click on the wrong thing here. We could go here and we could change it to 
any peak ding. And so we could manually go one by one and do that. And that would be a pain. That'd be awful. So let's not do that. So what instead we want to do is we can do it from here, from the, the attributes palette. We can go to the attribute manager up here and do it. We are going to select the surface and delete. And now our CAD is going to give us the option to delete and replace. We'll delete and replace and we'll figure something that uh, we want it to be replaced with. So we could say we want it aluminum metal. Just, just for illustrative purposes, I'm going to do MEP heating just so we can see. So now everything that was that is now red. And so we can go through and be like, okay, all these things that are black, I bet these should all be the same black. And we're going to delete and replace it with place. Now all of those blacks are replaced with black. And so we can just keep going through and saying, okay, this is orange. We're going to delete that with something that looks orange. And go ahead and delete that. You want to go a little slow and be careful because probably what I did with the deleting and the replacing the black is not all of this should have been black. There was probably two different reasons those blacks were used. So going by going one by one or doing it really quickly and seeing what garbage you made and then undoing it or deleting the object and reimporting it and doing it again slowly. Or you can do something where you change all the colors to like bright ones. So you do a red and a purple and a green and a pink so that it's easy to see like this black let's make that this random pink and now we can go through around and see in the model okay that didn't i don't even know where that black was that wasn't anything and we can say okay this this white let's make it green and again we're just doing this so we can see okay that was the body of the car that was an important one so we can make note of that and go back anyways so you're going to spend some time you're going to clean up the the surfaces delete and replace to get what you want hope that makes sense spent too much time talking about that okay so we've, we've deleted and replaced that, and so we end up with something that looks like this, right? It's all nice and clean. At this stage, you can also go through, and some objects, when you explode them, will turn into one morph. Others will turn into a lot of different morphs. Let's see. I can go off script here and see if I can explode this. Uh, it just goes into one. Anyway, sometimes you can get it into a couple of pieces, and you can go in and start deleting the things. Like If you didn't want this Chevy symbol, you can go and delete that, right? And then you save the object. So sometimes you have the ability to simplify the model by deleting things. That's a whole nother video how to manage morphs. But basically clean up the surfaces and then get rid of anything you don't want from the model. Like maybe you don't want the steering wheel. So just delete the steering. So, so we got that cleaned up. And then you select this stuff and you go file libraries and objects, save selection as object and you give it a name. We'll just call it new object. And now here again, you have the option to start changing all these things. So you could, instead of doing the process we did where you delete and replace, you could do it all here, but this is much harder to track. If you're really clever and patient, you could say, okay, this is the, if you know what it is, this is the window, the windshield, whatever. And so when you get into the object, so let's call that grapes, let's call this pizza. When you get into the object, you'll see that all that stuff is now in the object. Let's let it save. If we go to object tool now and place that settings, you can see under surfaces where I called it window, test, grapes, pizza. That's, that's all there. And that's really, that's handy. So if you're doing an object that is really, um, really important to be able to change all the surfaces after the fact, spend a little more time at this phase and figure out how to label everything properly. And again, this might be the thing where you set it to all the colors being weird so that when you save the object, you can then map them, right? If the object is all saved as Technicolor like this, when you save it, you know can is body of car. So you can type in body of car in that save as and then set it to the right color. Hopefully that makes sense. Okay, so we've saved the object, but you look, the object has a, a crap ugly floor plan symbol. So there's that path to create the 3D of the object at the same time or after that, you go back to the morph and you take the morph, you drag a copy of it over here, and then you do, I think we do it from context menu. So right click and under move, no. Okay. These are all things I just do with keyboard shortcut and don't think about it. So edit, reshape, explode into current view. So we're gonna do that. Uh, we're not gonna keep the original afterwards. So what happens is now the morph is gone and we have a bunch of line work. So now you spend some time and you just delete all this line work and you change the pen to be, you know, whatever you want. I'm just changing it to red so you can see that I'm changing it. So you spend some time, you clean it all up and eventually you get this.
And you have those hot spots because those hot spots are the edge of the overall symbol, which will matter in a moment. And then you can also add a fill. One way to add a fill is you bring the fill in like bigger than the object, and then you do subtract and it should work, but it's not working for me right now. Maybe if we do it halfway here. Okay, so there it is. So I did subtract, so I didn't have to trace around that object. And then we can mirror this. We can select those two and we can do fill consolidation. And now we have one fill. We can turn off that. Somewhere out here, I have the other fill. Okay, so explode the morph, clean up the line work, add a fill. We got that. Now let's copy that. Okay, so we have our new object here. I've placed it and we're going to do file libraries and objects, open object. So command option O on the Mac. And we're going to, we've now opened the object. And this is where people might start freaking out because we're at the edge of GDL. Don't worry. There's smarter ways and clever ways to do all the things we're doing today. We're doing the dumb, simple version. So here's parameters. If you now realize surface two is actually the engine, you can change all that stuff here. And this is pickles. Uh, if all we do is save that and go back to this object and go into the settings, you can see under surfaces, it's now pickles and engine where it was surface two, surface three. So a lot of the stuff, if you don't do to begin with, you can do later. Let's go back to the object. Uh, here you can also change the default surfaces. Don't worry about this. I'm just showing it because it showed up and it's distracting me from my video. What we're going to do is go down to 2D. This is the 2D symbol and this is all the GDL script that is describing this 2D view. So we're going to go select it all, delete it because we don't need it. We're now going to go to 2D view and we'd already copied our 2D symbol. And we're going to paste that there. Maybe it didn't copy. So we're going to do that again. Don't need to select that. So just command C copy 2D view. They went 2D. Oh, okay, there we are. Okay. So here, here's the thing. I might cut some of this out of the video. So we want to go to 2D symbol, not 2D view. So right. So 3D view shows us the 3D view. 2D view shows us the 2D view, but there is no 2D view. 2D view. We want to go to 2D symbol. Now we're going to paste. Uh, we're going to paste there. And now what matters is, I believe, where this is in relation to that origin there. So here's our symbol. I'm going to hit Command S for save to save the object. Now, now if we go to 2D view, it's still not showing. Don't worry. Ignore that. We got the 2D symbol. It looks good. We saved it. Now if we go back to the floor plan, there, there it is. Okay, but now we've got an issue here. We can see that these hot spots are a little off. So I placed the object wrong in the 2D symbol somehow. So that's one of the things you need to be really careful of when placing the 2D symbol in the GDL object is that this symbol can be out of sync with the 3D object. Okay, so I figured out the problem. You can see I don't have the, I didn't put the hot spots or the symbol in the right spot. So I got to actually take this and move this car. Let's assume this is the farthest over. Deselect those. Hopefully we'll speed this up or figure out a way to shorten this video. Okay, so we're going to take this. We're going to move this over to line up with that. So now the car should be within the bounds of that box. And now when I save it, now we go back to the floor plan. So I think I might still have the the top a little wrong, but that's that's what happened is that I didn't have the object centered. So when you save this 2D symbol, you got to make sure that it is perfectly set. And that's why I have those hot spots in there to make sure that the, the 2D symbol and the 3D symbol are aligned. I'm not going to spend any more time figuring it out, but you get the point, right? So there we have it. If I did that perfectly clean, you now end up with this thing, which is the proper finished object, which is a good looking object and a good looking 2D symbol. And if I open this object, which is the one I did right at the beginning and spent time with, and we go to the 2D symbol, you can see I added some other hotspots in this symbol at the corners of the I view mirrors and basically all these spots where I think I might try and select the object, I've added hotspots there. Because if we go back, this is one of these like weird ArchiCAD things. You know, if you're trying to click an object in a weird spot, it's sometimes awkward to select it. So here, I've just picked the added hotspots to where I know I typically go to pick it. Okay, that's what I got for you guys today. I hope that makes sense and wasn't too confusing. Please ask questions in the comments. This process is really straightforward. You bring in the object, you convert it to morphs, you clean it up, you replace fills, then you also make a copy of that morph, explode it, clean up the floor plan, 
and then you merge those two together. And when you merge the two together, you delete the 2D script, and then you place the new stuff in the 2D symbol fill, and then use hotspots or however you want to make sure that the 2D symbol is centered properly and not, you know, mirrored or, or something weird where the 2D symbol and the 3D object are not perfectly aligned or not the exact same shape because both those things can cause problems. I'm sure there's a million more things to talk about with this because object creation can get really complicated and there are, I don't want to say better, but uh, more powerful ways to clean up objects in ARCHICAD. But for people who just need quick, simple things for entourage, for like cars or kitchen appliances or one-off things, or you're just getting used to creating objects in ARCHICAD, this is a great start. There's a lot of places you can go from here by scripting things from scratch or adding more intelligence to what you import. And this isn't hard to do, so you should never have anything in the ARCHICAD file that looks garbage like this, right? Take this, turn it into a morph, do this process, do it quickly. You'll have a better looking model. Okay, that's it. Thank you all very much. Thanks to Madeline for editing this video. I appreciate it. There's a, probably a lot of garbage you're gonna have to cut out. Please like and subscribe. Follow me on all the social media places. Download the template, the Shinome Open template. Download the Shinome work environment for ARCHICAD 27. And yeah, have a great day. Thank you very much.